the parable of the wheat and the tares. All right, so first, before we read the parable, let's just talk what a tear is. A tear, in its early stages, basically until harvest, it looks like wheat. So in all of the stages, until it's time to harvest, you cannot tell them apart. Just like Cain's seed line is humans, you cannot tell a seed line from Cain different from a seed line from Seth. So this is about two seed lines. Jesus and all of his parables are constantly talking about two seed lines. He does it in different ways. We're going to, we're going to read the wheat and the tares because this is about the end days. We're now in the end days. Today's May 7th, 2023. And we're in the last three years before tribulation starts. If you, um, that's my, my conclusion and looking at everything. Okay. So what a tear is, um, it's a poisonous weed, and if it's eaten by humans or animals, it causes nausea and then convulsions and for some even death. And so it is not fully matured and ready for harvest that you can see the poisonous tips because the tips of the tears turn black and stand straight up. So if you've seen a field of wheat at harvest time, the wheat is heavy, the tip is heavy, full of grain, and it's kind of bent over, right? It's, it's, it's bowing its head as we should before our Lord. The wheat is bowing its head, but what is stiff and straight and black is the tear. And so this is what, so, so you have a little understanding what Jesus is talking about here. You're not gonna know the difference until the time of harvest. And so let's start with Matthew 13. All right, let's start in verse 24. So the elements here Jesus is talking about is the man, the good seed, the field, the enemy, the tares, and the harvest. All right, so I just wanted to break that down. We're, we're being given the man is the good seed, which is the field, right? The enemy is the tares, and the end days, the harvest. All right, so again, Matthew 13, verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Children of light. Verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. The devil. Verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up, brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Cain seed line, the snake seed line. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servants said unto him, Will thou go then? We go and gather them up. But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. So in other words, we can't do anything about the snake seed line until the end of days. They're going to be bundled up and thrown into the fire, but, but we can't do that until it's the end of time. Right before God's millennial kingdom is going to come down to earth. Okay, we, that's when we can do this. But the enemy is going to be among you, within you, throughout you, around you. Big population in this kingdom of darkness. All right, Matthew 13 Verse 30, I think this is the most important verse in the Bible that's so overlooked. Well, you know, because you've been churched, right? You, we're, we're believing in this whole fly away rapture thing. Well, that's not what Jesus tells us. These words are in red. This is what you need to know. Matthew 13, verse 30. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, reapers are angels, Gather ye together first the tares, first the tares, bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Okay, here is where I love Haggai 2.19. Is the seed in the barn? Go read that. It's just, it's, it's so cool. I love it. Haggai 2.19. Is the seed in the barn? Okay, we're not, these tares are going to disappear first. 
the tares are going to be bound and disappear first. Well, it says right here, they're going to be bound in bundles to burn them. But we're going to be safe. We're going to be in, in the barn. Whatever that's a metaphor is, it doesn't matter. We're safe. That's all that matters. But the church has been taught by the fallen angels of this lie that the believers, the wheat goes first. It's just not the case. Jesus tells us in the wheat and the tares parable that Satan's seed line will be bound and burned. But yet, this is Satan's greatest tool. When all the believers that are left behind and they start turning on the priest and the pastors and the prophets, the whole church will be banned because of this twist. The devil knows his seed line will be dealt with first before thy kingdom come down to earth and Jesus takes his throne on earth. The devil knows this and he's going to use it to his advantage. And in comes that one world religion. And everybody will want it because it'll be, and I've said in other videos, it'll be holographic images of Mother Mary, who everybody loves, who doesn't love Jesus' mom. It'll be her, you know, um, preaching to everybody on peace and safety. Let's unify. Let's become one. We need peace and safety. Mark my words. If you, if your cornerstone is in Christ Jesus and in the gospel, you're not going to fall for that. But I think we'll be the few <laughs> that won't fall for that. We'll see. In the days of Jesus, the weed is called a tear. So literally, um, in the days of Jesus, instead of, instead of them saying weeds, they say tears. So... This parable is about the mystery of the kingdom of God, which he is telling us we can have now on earth. And the harvest is our eternal walk with him. When I read both of the two books of Adam, and it's well known, um, and the reason it's pulled out of the Bible is the seed line of Cain. It's talked a lot, a lot in there. I mean, what they were doing, the begin these beginning days of this city at the bottom of the mountain, the seed line of Adam is very clear about this to his son, Seth. And down the line, they're told not to go down, down out of the mountain. So Adam and his sons, all of his sons, to Noah, they all stayed on the mountain. There's a mountain. They're staying on top of it. And there is a city at the bottom of the mountain that's being built. Huge, huge city. And they're basically having evil uh, sex with everything that moves. The birds, the fish, the animals. There's, there's, it, it's nothing but pure evil continually. Okay. And, and it's all being watched until the time of Noah, when they, when the spring spring up. And what's happening constantly is the devil is shape shifting into some other form. And he's constantly going to Adam and, and sending strong delusions, strong hallucinations and evil desires to take over Adam's heart. And Adam is just constantly has to go to God and ask, please clarify, give me, you know, take this evil away from me, take this off on my heart. And he, Adam is constantly fasting and praying and, you know, doing, uh, what's the word I want, uh, you know, offerings to God. And so eventually when Adam's bodies die, God comes down himself and pre pre preserves Adam's body with gold, frankincense and myrrh. The same that was brought to Jesus' birth by the wise men. So the seed line of Cain is known. All of the fathers under Seth to Noah that God will bring a flood. And only Noah and his family will survive. They actually all watched what was happening in the cities below the mountain that everyone of Cain's seed line was doing. It was just lust never ending. So... The devil comes in at night when no one is watching. The men are sleeping, so the devil is a copycat. He is sowing as much seed as the Son of Man, as Jesus is He's polluting our DNA while we are sleeping. We are unaware and distracted by life. It is in the air. In other words, what's going on right now? When you talk about the tears, this, this tear is coming into us. It's corrupting our DNA. So it is in... 
um, some type of nanotechnology, uh, some type of biological synthetic materials that is basically taking us away from being human into something other than human. It is raping and, and manipulating and changing our DNA structure. So it's in the air we're breathing, it's in um, the food, it's in the water, it's in the soil. I mean, it's everywhere. There, the, the, that's what's happening right now. While we are literally, while we're sleeping, we're being continu sleeping and, and walking around outside or whatever, whatever we're doing, we're being continually taking in biological synthetic materials and which will eventually morph us into some shape-shifting, I don't know what, skinwalker thing going on. All right, so look, Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. What are those power, signs, and lying wonders? Powers are going to be the fallen angel because the fallen angel are called powers. Powers in the skies with their UFOs, with their hol holographic images, signs in the heavens. Well, we know that the moon is going to change. Stars are going to fall. I mean, there's going to be celestial bodies shape-shifting and changing, lying wonders. Wait till their UFOs are going to take you into whatever immortal Immortal, beautiful, next new reality. Some new earth situation. And continuing on, Thessalonians 2.10. With all deceival deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. They, they have itching ears. They don't want to know the truth. That's not convenient. All right, that's not... I w they want instant gratification. Isn't that what everybody wants? Instant gratification. Tell me what I want to hear. Show me what I want to see. And, and let, me, let, me, let me take that fast track to my immortal reality. I didn't mean to make that rhyme. All right. Second Thess 2.11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Look, at some point, God throws in the towel. It's like, okay. You know, I, I have done everything to get through to you guys. So, have at it. Now, I'm going to send a strong delusion. Now, when God says he's going to send a strong delusion, watch out. That they, might, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So, Satan is lawless. He loves lawlessness. Which is why in 2020, um, the whole defund the police. We're headed to the days of lawlessness. We, you know, we've we've had those days before. Nothing new under the sun. Look at the wild, wild west, especially Arizona. Back in the 1800s. Yeah, lawlessness. All right, so. Today, you, you turn on the TV and it's just constantly, now it's really teenagers kind of taking over. Young people are just furious. I mean, they're just, you know, demonically possessed. They don't, they don't understand it. They're just in this, they're in the streets. It's just a frenzy. All right. So what do we know? We know a Paul, uh, for, or Timothy, 1 Timothy 1, 9. Knowing this. That the law is not made for righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers. You can read that verbatim. Enoch says that. And the wheat and tares is the end of days. The mystery of the kingdom of God. All right. The mystery of the kingdom of God is in Matthew thirteen thirty one. Another parable. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. The grain of a mustard seed is faith. It cannot be seen or proven. We know this by Jesus' words in Matthew seventeen twenty, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, 
For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, we shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Right? We can also read Jesus' words in Luke 17, 6. And the Lord said, if ye had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. Again in Mark 4, 31. It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. All right, so there is 200, again, go to the concordance. There are 231 verses with the word faith. Only two are in the Old Testament. The entire book of Hebrews um, 11, Hebrews 11, all of Hebrews is about faith, but Hebrews 11 is about faith and talks of Enoch and Noah. So, you know, there's plenty of reasons to read Enoch. I know there's a lot of religious people out there. Look, I, I don't do religion. I've not been church, so I don't care what the pastors and the prophets say. I just read for myself. And I, once you read, you can, see, you can see the truth in the Apocrypha. You can see the truth in um, the Ethiopian Bible. Because the angels are talking all the time. And they say the identical things they say to Daniel. And in and, and other places. I mean, you, the truth is there. The supernatural is definitely, look, God is supernatural. The angels are supernatural. We are supernatural before the fall out of the garden. Right? We live in a supernatural reality. And if you don't understand the supernatural war that's over your heads, how are you going to fight it? We're going to be fine. You need to, uh, you need to understand um, what's coming down upon us because it's, it's going to be supernatural. And the church hates the supernatural. That's all there is to it. They took it away. All right, so the devil, being a copycat, comes in the night, as Jesus will. Um, Paul tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 2 to 7. For yourselves know perfectly the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, peace and safety. Remember, Mother Mary is going to come down with that message. I'm telling you right now. Holograph, it's going to be, there will be sightings all over the world. All over the world. People of all ages have sightings of Mother Mary and she's saying, unite, peace and safety. That, that will be the false religion's, um, you know, banner. The sudden destruction cometh, cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. Here we are told to stay in the light for the tribulation will be on us. But we will not suffer. Have strong faith. When the tares are taken first, before the Son of Man comes, as in the days of Noah and Lot. All right. The last and only time there was in our generation, peace and safety, law and goodness, and some type of respect and kindness, was before the start of January of 2020. When we went our entire life never expecting that overnight, right, just overnight, what happened, at least here is Arizona, March of 2020, the entire country shut down. No work, no schools, no nothing on the entire planet? Come on. Quite literally, the world changed, and it will never be the same. That was the breaking of the first seal. That was the running of the first horse. Overnight, we went through to some type of this woke drag, drag queen, this Karen kind of psychology, just evil. A total lack of any resemblance of intelligence. Look at our leaders. I mean, 
It is King Saul all over again. Just grow feathers and long claws and go out and eat grass. That's how unintelligible the two biggest offices in this nation have in them. Unintelligible. Nonsense. Zero IQ. All right. But what's going to take over? What's going to take over now? The teachers today coming on the scene is going to be AI. AI is on the run and there will be no need for humans really anywhere. I mean, look, Matthew 24, verse 22. And if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. So the rest of May and June um, marks the last three years or so, I do believe, before the tribulation. That's my math. Um, it is a pattern you can find on Daniel's timeline. So we can expect at least, at least, okay, major earth disasters, earthquakes, volcanoes, worldwide food shortage. The black horse is now running. That's the way I see it. The black horse is running. The entire, the wheat and the tares look just alike until the end, time harvest, in which the tares turn black. In other words, darkness on the inside. The darkness on the inside, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel it when it walks by you. All right? You're going to see it in the eyes. You're going to hear it. And the words, the darkness on the inside, it's always been there. But in the end days, it's going to be visible and it will dominate and rule the day. So the thing to understand here is the mystery of the kingdom of God is that the good seed and the bad seed is going to grow together. The seed is with us all the time. It's in every institution, every university. It's in, it's in our teachers. It's in the churches. It's in our families. It's in the heads of state. It's in the, over the countries. The bad seed, just so you know, has all the money for sure. And they mostly know who they are and who controls them. They have the knowledge of time traveling demons. All right. Yes, guys, demons never die. Demons never change. And they can travel the timeline that makes the, um, what, do you, what do they call them? The powers to be? Yeah, it gives them a lot of information that works for the side of evil. Um, so there's no such thing as an election any longer. That concept is, is destroyed, completely gone. AI will decide what's going on now. We are at a constant bombardment of the words and actions and teaching lies of the tears, the uh, snake seed line people. They outnumber us for they started procreating with the sons of Ham. So, and that became the kingdom of Nimrod, in which his DNA is still being accessed and used because Nimrod became a Gibberah, a giant, an Ephilim. So I'm going to end that there. And all God's people said, Amen.